Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you are having a fantastic day. Uh, the title of this video, extremely self-explanatory. There's no guessing here. This car, that car, that car, all of these have cars have one thing in common, and that is there's a salesperson involved. It doesn't matter if you're buying privately, it doesn't matter if you're buying on Craigslist, it doesn't matter if you're buying from a car dealership, it doesn't matter if your mom and dad are giving you a car. There's a salesperson involved somewhere. Every single person in this world is in sales, 100%. You're saying, Mike, I work in a factory. How can I be a salesperson? Let me tell you, it doesn't matter if you're a little three-year-old kid begging mommy and daddy at the grocery store to buy you a candy bar. That kid is selling the parents on the idea to purchase them the candy bar. And I'll tell you what, the kids are the best salesmen. Next thing out of your parents' mouth, well, if I buy you a candy bar, will you just shut up and leave me alone? Kid just closed the parents. If you're purchasing a car on Craigslist, that person selling you and has posted that car is selling you the idea that this is the car that they want you to spend money with and you better believe it than I'm selling you on cars as well. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step process on how a car salesman can trick you into purchasing a car. I'm gonna share with you detailed oriented information so that way when you go in to buy your next car that you will be armed with the knowledge of what that salesperson is doing and where they are in their sales process out there. Before I begin, if this is the first time that you're viewing my channel, I'm one of the top Chevrolet salesmen in the country. I'm a huge consumer advocate and I do everything I can to help sell cars in a most ethical manner as you find. Matter of fact, my trademark saying, buying a car doesn't have to suck. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn your bell notifications on, and leave a big fat thumbs up. If you'd like, go to the Chevy Dude store. The link is in the description below and pick up your own Chevy Dude merch. So here it is. Here is the diagram on how car salesmen trick you into buying a car. And before I begin, uh, down in the description, there is a link to the eight steps to get the best car deal the next time you buy a car. So that's something I've made up. It's coming straight from me. I've created it. It's all, all about how you can sit here and get the best deal on the next purchase of a car. Even if it's not for me, it could be from anybody. So this is the diagram that tricks you into buying a car. And you look at that, there's how is that possible? Well, I'm gonna talk about why it's shaped like this at the end, um, but imagine each one of these is a road to walk down, okay? So you're coming to a dealership for a reason. The salesperson knows that. You're not coming to the dealership to buy a gallon of milk. You're coming there to get, seek information on to buy a car. A little bit of internet stats. A huge amount of stats that we behind the scenes know on a daily basis. Consumers visit on average 1.2 dealerships before they purchase a car. So if you're showing up on a dealership slot, you know darn well they're gonna do everything they can to sell you a car because the likelihood of you coming back is extremely little. So um, there's a reason why dealerships sit there and try to put a deal together as hard as fast as they can because they know they'll never get you back. So let's start with the diagram and I'll kind of show you with what I'm talking about. Let's go right here. This is step one. Step one, there's no dispute in it. It happens on every dealership slot. It happens immediately as soon as you walk on the dealership lot. And that's simply the welcome to the dealership. Welcome to ABC Motors. How can I help you? What brings you in today? Blah, blah, blah. Are you here for our big sale? Uh, are, have you worked with a salesperson before? All those types of things happen right when you get to. This is where they have a big smile, they're excited to see you, and they start buttering you up because they wanna sell you a car, okay? So the next step, this is step number two. This is the most critical step to every car deal. If this step is skipped, a salesman will fail to sell you a car. So you better believe it that the salesperson is gonna do everything they can right here to make sure that they do their job correctly. This is what's called the fact finding, the interview, the qualification. It's all called all sorts of different things all over the, inter uh, all over the industry. I'm gonna call it the interview process. The reason salespeople do this is to find out factual information from you so that they can sell you a car. Now let me tell you a couple of tidbits. Never tell a salesperson you're just looking. It's the oldest line in the book. For me personally, 
I don't really go out and talk to new people on the lot, but if I do, I never ask, how can I help you? Because the very first comment out of your mouth, oh, we're just looking. Then where do I go as a salesperson? Me as a salesperson, if I bring, talk to you out on the lot, I uh, bring that objection out beforehand. Hey, you guys doing some looking and shopping today? Now what do you say as a consumer? There's books and there's internet reviews and there's uh, videos, all that stuff out there to help you buy a car. This right here has never been shown to you and I'm gonna help you out so that way you can do the car shopping the best in the future. Not to mention, down in the description is the eight steps to getting the best car deal on your next purchase. So during the interview process, a lot of questions are asked. A lot of questions are asked that are open ending and they have linking questions after you answer those questions. Now these questions will never have a yes or no answer. The reason why is if I ask you a question, do you like white? And you say no, I have nowhere to go. Remember I said a path? My goal is to get to all the way to the end and that's delivering you a car. So. During the step two process, I'm asking you open-ended linking questions. What are you driving now? I don't care if you pull up and I'm sitting here and I'm leaning on your car talking to you. I still ask you, what are you driving now? Because this may not be your car. You may not be doing anything with this car and I don't assume anything. We all know what assume means. No car salesman, no good car salesman ever assumes anything from a customer. They don't assume credit. They don't assume if you're gonna buy today. They don't assume anything at all. So they ask a lot of questions. What brings you in today? Are you here for our big sale? Okay, I mentioned that in, during step one. But step two gets more in depth. They qualify to see if you are a legitimate buyer. So. Uh, what are you driving now? Oh, excellent. What do you plan on doing with that? Well, I plan on trading it in. I was going to sell it. I'm giving it to a neighbor. I'm giving it to a friend. I'm going to roll it off a cliff with C4 in it. I don't know. Okay. There's a question to ask and it's an open-ended question and who knows what the answer is going to be, but you're going to ask it. Now, the one question I never ask a customer, I have this in my videos all the time. Oh, you just hold the trade until the end. Guess what? A good salesman like myself, I don't ask if you're trading. What are you doing with that car? You've never heard that question before. And so you're gonna divulge the information, unfortunately, too early for a good, a good salesman who likes to take advantage of people. Me, I got your back. I'm not gonna take advantage for you. I'm here to help. Other good questions that salespeople should ask you during this process uh, after what are you driving now is what do you like about it? What do you dislike about it? What kind of features do you wanna have in your new car? Uh, why are you trading? That's a good big one. Why are you getting rid of this car? Again, it's a trick question because you're gonna divulge information of, well, it's been giving me a lot of problems lately. Um, it's just, you know, I'm the type of person that likes to trade every 30,000 miles, whatever the case may be. But if you start talking about problems, then they're devouring your trade. See my trade video uh, down in the, in the description as well. Um, so that's what this is doing. They're interviewing. Now the good questions come. Are you credit worthiness? Can you buy a car? How are you paying for a car? Are you putting money down? You know, all that good things. Are you ready to buy now? It's a big question. Now, the key word is now, not today, not tomorrow, not how soon you're going to buy. Are you ready to buy now? That salesman is gauging you in order to work with you or not work with you uh, when you walk into the dealership. So when they say now, and you said maybe, yes, if the deals right that's indicators that they've got a fish on the hook right that's how they talk about it in the car business so let's go to number three okay three is way over here we're going up we're going like this so number three is what's called presentation selecting a car it's called all sorts of stuff so we're going to put selective s-e-l-e-c-t-i-v-e -E, presentation so basically this is finding out your wants and needs from the interview process and they're going to go into showing you a car. A good salesperson is not really going to take you on a lot and drive you around or walk you around the dealership uh, because here's why. Us as consumers, we wonder, oh, what about this car? 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 One thing I forgot to mention in level number two, what can you afford per month? Let me tell you something about that. Stop saying 250 a month. 250 a month is a cell phone bill, not a car bill. The average car payment is just a little over $500 per month. I said car, not truck or SUV. Truck or SUV, you're gonna be a minimum of six and $700 per month, typically standing with excellent credit. So don't hate me for those comments. I'm just telling you the way it is. So a good rule of thumb, if you're looking to buy a car, $20 for every thousand that you finance. 
Okay, so financing a $30,000 vehicle, that's a $600 payment. Do the math. So the selective presentation, I'm showing you the car, I'm buttering you up again, I'm gonna see if you like it, what do you think about this, what do you think about that? Again, more open-ended linking questions to that particular car. Do you like the color? Do you like the fact that it's got leather seats? Do you like the fact that it's got a sunroof? Do you like this, do you like this, do you like this? Why do I ask these closed-ended questions like that, yes or no? Because the more yeses you say, the more likelihood when it comes to you purchasing a car, then they're gonna sh share a yes again, and they sold a car. So let's go over, we're gonna walk all the way over here, we're gonna go to number four. This is a real simple one, this is the demo drive. So the demo drive is when you go out and you test drive the car. The whole point of test driving the car is so that way you learn that this is a really nice car, everything is really super tight, there's no noises, there's no squeaks, there's no rattles, it's a super quiet interior. It has a lot more features than your car that you are trading in. What's that do to us? We always want the best and the better out there. So therefore, you're starting to like this car again and again. A good salesperson, unfortunately, there's a lot of them out there who don't do this, but a good salesperson should take you on about a 15 or 20 minute test drive, not a two minute test drive around the lot. If you go on a two minute test drive around the lot, ask the customer, ask the salesperson to go on a much longer one. If you can get 10, 15, 20 miles on a test drive, that's good for you and it's good for the salesperson as well because that makes sure that you do like the car, you can get over, you can get over more obstacles, tracks, hills, curves, high traffic, whatever the case may be. So a good demo ride, um, which I've kind of shared within the past, but I can do a video. I'm gonna do a video down on the road there on the demo drive. Um, but uh, that's the next step on the dealerships appraisal or the uh, sales process. So then we're gonna walk all the way over here. We're going to go over to the number five, okay? So I've done a video on this. So if you don't know where that video is, right above my head is a link to uh, that video if you want to see that. Um, this is where you get your trade evaluated. How much is your trade worth, okay? So this is where they're gonna start doing that silent walk around that I've talked about in that last video. So again, check that out if you don't know what that terminology means. This is what they're gonna find out what your car is worth. So a good salesperson is never gonna ask you, well, so what do you want for your car? I would never ask that question. That set me up for failure. The reason I don't wanna ask you for your car because you are gonna tell me way too much money. So therefore, I'm gonna sit here and I'm not gonna ask that question. I'm gonna sit here and assume that I'm gonna do my job correctly and I'm going to do it dead on value-wise. I also could sit here and be like, you know what? I'm gonna give you five grand to less. We've heard those stories, right? I personally don't do that. I'm usually dead on with my trade values. Um, I get it all the time. People always think what their car is worth more money. I don't care about what you think. I'm saying that very respectfully. I'm just saying it dead on. I don't care what you think what your car is worth. I'm going off of market-based pricing. So just like you're purchasing a car, I'm purchasing a car as well, and I've got to buy it for the right money to resell it and to uh, make a profit on it. So this is going to be the trade valuation, what it's worth. So obviously a dealership is going to sit there and try to get it for as little money as they possibly can, but the good dealerships, they do it right out the gate, right out the front. I've got tips and how you can figure out how to get the best dollar amount and the true accurate dollar amount um, in the uh, eight steps to the best car deal, uh, that link in the below. So, and one question you wanna do too, I talked about it in that video, is you wanna make sure that you ask the salesperson after they show you numbers, would you write me a check for your trade value. You always want to make sure you ask that question. Would you write me a check for that dollar amount? The reason why is you're going to find out real quick if they're being truthful or they're lying to you on what your trade is worth. So the number one issue that I come in with trades is someone says, well, ABC Motors over here gave me $3,000 more for my car. Well, that's because they're lying to you about their trade value. Again, that's in my trade video out there. The next thing we're going to walk way over here and we're gonna do number six step. Now the number six step is the second most important step out there. This is where the biggest tricks happen. And this is where you become a buyer. So uh, what happens here 
is uh, I'm gonna link another video right above here. This is kind of a joke video. Uh, me and a, a salesperson was role playing. I figured I'd put it out there. And, uh, but I was showing his new salesperson how to go over numbers on a car. And it's easier to watch that video than it is for me to explain. But they're gonna go over all the numbers on a car deal. Now, if you see something like this, get up out of your chair, Tell the salesperson, thank you, you're not interested, and walk out of that dealership right now. If you see what this is, this is called a four square. If you see this, this is designed to do one thing for a dealership, to sell you the car and to get the most profit out of it. This is not customer friendly. This is not designed to help you in any way, shape, or form. This right here is completely 100% helped the dealership to confuse you 100%. This is called a four square because there's four keys to every dealer, to every car deal. Car price, the down payment, the monthly payment, and the trade value. There's four keys to every car dealership and that's what they're gonna go over to you with you right here in the purchase consultation number six. So this is what I show every single customer. This is gonna be the most best way to have a salesperson show you all the true facts about a car deal. There's nothing in here that's possibly hiding anything. It's 100% fully transparent. As you see right here, we have the MSRP of a new car or maybe a list price or the market price of a used car. Um, new cars, you're gonna see the rebate line, you're gonna see the discount line, you're gonna see your trade value down here, you're gonna see all the sales taxes, all the title fees, all the dealer fees down here, which we're gonna talk about uh, dealer document fees down the road. Um, if they're a scam or if they're not a scam, I'm gonna explain those to you down the road. And then we have your payoff, if there's a payoff available, and then the total bottom line. So this would be, the, this would be if you would pay cash for the vehicle and there's no financing. So um, over here, you can see that we've got a bunch of payments on here. We have different down payments and we have different terms, 60, 66, 72, 84, whatever the case may be, as you can see right here. Now you're like, well, why is there a, a $10 swing there? So the reason the $10 swing is there is simply because we have not submitted your credit to the bank. We may have not even pulled your credit. Um, and we have sat here and uh, are guesstimating payments. Now, you got to remember, dealerships do this every single day. If you've divulged to me that you have challenged credit, I'm most likely going to pull credit and I'm using my best guess to sell a car and not have you walk out uh, to do everything. So you got to realize that a dealership is showing you numbers like this to sell you a car. The four square I showed you earlier, that's only benefit is to sell a car and to make as much money as to confuse you because those guys are true professionals and they're going to sit here and uh, hammer you until you say yes and they wear you down and break you down and you're just like i'm tired of dealing with car sales just let's buy it and move on so that's what the four square is designed to do this is completely so you can just be like okay let's do it let's not do it it's too much payment whatever the case may be so so that's what that does. So the payments are there because uh, we're guesstimating what's going on. Until we submit it to the bank and have a full approval, um, you, we'll divulge exactly to the penny payment and to the penny uh, decimal point on the interest rate as well. The reason the, decimal, the interest rate isn't disclosed because we haven't put uh, up your deal to the bank for an approval. Um, it's putting the cart before, before the horse. So don't sit there and be like, well, just go ahead and submit it because there's a lot of banks out there who don't want to uh, just look at car deals and not fund deals. So they want to sell, uh, they want to buy the business just like you want to buy a car. So don't ask to do that up front. Just take that into consideration. And if you go to Google and put in payment calculator, you can kind of work it, work it all backwards to know exactly what kind of interest rate that it is. Now, if a dealership is figuring a high interest rate, don't freak out. They're just protecting themselves. So that way you uh, don't have to sit there and be like, hey, great news. We have a 450 payment for you. They submit it to the bank. Their idea was wrong. And it's gonna be a 455, 460 payment rather than a 450 payment. Now it becomes a headache and a hassle uh, for both parties, the dealership and the consumer. So if I tell you 460 and it's 450, you're excited, you're happy, sweet. If I tell you 450 and it's actually 460, now it's a negative conversation that we don't wanna to have to go there. So, so this is where the key is, is how uh, dealerships are really, really sitting here and tricking you into buying a car. So um, last one, number seven, this is the best part. This is where you get to take the car home. Uh, you get to go over all the last features with Chevrolet, General Motors, you get to activate the OnStar, um, pair your cell phone, all that good stuff. So the last part of the circle, you're gonna say, Mike, well, all the, all the circles are filled in. Well, that's not really the case. 
um, because this is one huge circle. So uh, in my world, um, I, I touch base with my customers on a routine basis. And uh, as, as some of my customers, a lot of my customers do watch these videos and a lot of my customers are from YouTube, they can comment down below. It's like, yeah, Mike is always in contact with us. So that's the last thing is a uh, follow-up process uh, that that dealership may do or this individual salesperson may do. Now, a lot of salespeople don't sit here and um, really follow up with their customers. Once you buy a car, you're out of their life and you're done. Uh, they don't ever think forward enough to that, hey, if I consistently talk to this person, I can get some referrals, I can get some repeat business out of it and stuff like that. So that's the last step. So um, with that, like I said, step number six is probably the most critical of where they're going to uh, trick you into buying a car, but it's really based off the foundation of all of this. So I told you at the beginning of the video that to imagine these as pathways, there's nothing you can ever do. You're always gonna come in and be welcomed by someone at the dealership. If you've been there before, it doesn't matter. Um, you may see the person that you recognize all the time because you've been going to this dealership for 30 years or 10 years or whatever. You bought 10 cars from them. Uh, they're always gonna welcome you back. Like, hey Mike, how's it going? that's a welcome right so now imagine you as a consumer and uh, as a salesperson this image is in the back of my head consistently with the customer so you walk in and you throw your keys to the salesperson I want to know what my trades worth right now before we do anything else happens a lot okay so now what you've essentially done is you were welcomed and then you went right to the trade evaluation. You skipped number two, number three, number four, and you went right to number five. So now um, what the salesperson has to do is get you way back here and start asking a lot of questions. And, and the type of person that I just explained uh, most likely has been screwed around at other dealerships. They think their car is worth more than what it's really worth. Uh, I kind of explained that to you earlier. Everything's done on market-based pricing, just basically um, like any type of stocks or bonds or cryptocurrency or anything like that. Uh, today it may be worth this, tomorrow may be worth this, the day after it may be worth this. They all fluctuate and it's obviously based off of uh, the dynamics of supply and demand. So I titled this video, um, uh, Buyer Beware, um, How Dealerships Trick You Into Purchasing a Car. So basically I wanted to show you the whole sales process that a dealership does. Um, so that way you can go into the dealership more soundly, more confident to know the process of what you're gonna go through. This is not something that really any dealership has done. They don't have it up on a board anywhere. And now I can divulge to you um, what this is right here and how it works. So um, to make this a little bit cleaner, um, I'll take these eights off. But, uh, um, you know, you still have, you know, an eight, a 10 step process, stuff like that. And this is, this is when I teach this to salespeople, um, this is like a week long course. Like I'll, I will sit here on all seven of these and talk eight to 10 hours per day on each one of these. I did this in under 20 minutes. So you can tell, I can, you can tell that I uh, kept out a lot of the stuff. But again, the welcome process is just, hey, welcome to the dealership. The interview process is to fact find, to find out what you're interested in, how you're gonna buy the car, are you can you afford it what's your credit like stuff like that select a presentation is showing you the car the demo ride self-explanatory you're gonna drive the car find out what your trades worth you might walk around the service drive and walk around the dealership here the purchase consultation is the big one uh, that's where you're gonna get um, um, start the process of buying the car the delivery when you say yes and the follow-up. So again, um, if you want to have a great experience, obviously use me. ChevyDude.com is where you can get a hold of me at, and then um, you know download my tips on the buying process of making yourself get a great car deal next time. So I want to say again, thanks for watching. Uh, I really enjoy doing these videos like this. If you want to see more videos like this, throw in the comments below. Give a big old fat thumbs up, and make sure you hit subscribe and turn the bell notification on. Again, my name is Mike Davenport, Louisville Chevy Dude, Blackman Chevrolet, Louisville, Kentucky. Have a great day and drive safely.